Hey everybody, uh, another using Emacs video. So I'm trying to, you know, trying to stay, trying to be a little bit better than I was for a while there. Uh, we'll see how long, uh, you know, I can uh, keep up the pace. But I discovered something the other day that I thought I wanted to share. Uh, you know, first a quick hit. Uh, thanks for everybody who's been commenting on the company versus autocomplete thing. I think I'm going to stick with company for you know a while just to see how it fits in, see how I feel with it, um, and then we'll go from there. Then we'll see if I switch back or or not. So one of the comments that I got uh, from someone was about aggressive indent mode. And aggressive indent mode is pretty cool. Um, you know, if you look here, it's, it's pretty easy to set up. But um, well, I mean, I'll just I'll give you a, can give you an example here. Let's say let's say I go to um, hello.python or you know, whatever a Python file, and we say um, you know uh, def f uh, and then for i in range ten. This is what I always type. Uh, you know, print i, whatever, or I can go to a C++ file, you know, test.cp, um, and I'm going to do file here, we'll do io, we'll do main, okay, and we'll say for, you know, whatever, if uh, condition, whatever, it doesn't really matter, and x equals 20, the code doesn't actually matter here, uh, but with aggressive indent, with regular indent, Things are indented, but if you make changes, um, like from here, if I, I think, well, that's a semantic deleting. Uh, but on the other hand, that's kind of cool. We've done that before. But if I delete that, nothing else changes, and you know, it just gets. I don't know. The, the, you have to deal with some of the tabbing yourself with aggressive delete or aggressive indent, rather. I also have aggressive delete. Um, it's just installing aggressive indent mode, and we can set global aggressive indent mode. Um, what we'll do here is why don't we just do try aggressive indent and it says trying it. So then if we say global aggressive indent mode, now in theory if we put in you know another loop in here, notice that no matter what we're doing, it's trying to keep it indented no matter what. You know, so there. You know, so it's, it does a better job with that. I don't remember why I stopped using it. I might have. Um, it maybe it didn't play well with another mode I did. Maybe on the other hand, I just rebuilt my configuration and I forgot to turn it back on, or I don't remember. But I'm going to set this up a little bit later. Um, I think I'm going to start taking the move that other people have of uh, putting my modes bindings binding my modes to other modes, so just putting this on for programming modes. Um, but that's not what I actually wanted to talk to you about today. What I wanted to talk about today dealing is dealing with snippets, um, but not YA snippets because, well, yes, YA snippets, but not really, um, because we've already, I already covered those a little bit, and I don't use them much. So for example, in um, Python, I use it for like a Flask little, you know, for my main Flask, I make a little, um, snippet for this to give me the entire basic application in one shot, but I don't really use it much for my Python development. In C++, I use it a little bit more. You saw me type main and then bracket and then I got rid of those. Uh, you know, or I maybe, you know, um, you know, I don't even know most of them here, but you know, I, I don't really use if too much. I do use for. Um, so I use these snippets, but I discovered on Reddit the other day a nice little package auto YA snippet. And auto YA snippet handles an interesting use case. Let me go to another buffer here, just some other buffer. Well, yeah, so, um, and a lot of times you want to enter a bunch of things with little changes in them. So, you know, sometimes I'll do that with macros. So I'll make a macro and I'll say, like, uh, this is item bang, you know, oh, didn't mean to do that. Um, what is it? Is it, it? Start the macro, this is item. And then I think that'll insert the counter, okay, and then I'll go here and I'll stop it. And each time I get that, um, but that only works if you have the counting situation. Another thing you can do is you could also do something like here. And I have this hyper installed, but it doesn't seem to be working um, for multiple cursors for edit lines. That doesn't seem to work. But on the other hand, if I do here and I do um, MC edit lines, I can do edit end of lines. Okay, this is cool. I guess I was a little bit more than I wanted to. But this also kind of, um, I sometimes have problems with this where, where things, whoops, excuse me one second, got to check what that phone is, I will be back. Okay, so sorry about that, just had to uh, deal with that call. Hopefully I can 
put these two pieces of videos together since I think um, open broadcaster studio or broadcasting studio makes this as two FLVs and I'll have to merge them. Um, but both of these things, macros and multiple cursors, are when you largely want to type the same thing over and over again. Um, and not when you want to have slight differences in them more than like the 0, 1, 2, 3, let me come over here, where's my cursor? Okay. Uh, like this uh, 0, 1, 2, 3 thing here. Um, you know, I guess you could probably drop out of the macro and then back in, but I forget how to do that. Um, but anyway, why a snippet, rather, auto why a snippet lets you do that. So it's really cool. So let's actually set this up. So let's go to myinit.org and we'll put in a section here for auto why a snippet and uh, Emacs lisp and it's going to be use package auto y snippet ah. ensure t um, so we're just going to just install it let's save that and let's just run that line so now we're installed and I'm going to put this into my personal key map and I'm just going to add a couple of keys here and I'm going to use Y to create the snippet and E to expand the snippet. And the two commands for that are going to be AYA create and AYA expand. So that's going to be AYA create and AYA expand. Let's run these. Um, now let's go back to our other buffer. And what we do here is let's say like, um, let's say var item and then I notice this tilde here, item dog equals uh, lookup sub dog, uh, tilde dog. And what I can do here is now I can use meta one y to create that snip up. And notice it changed, it got rid of those tildes. But now if I do meta one expand, so we can say cat. And then I can add out of it and meta one expand and uh, frog. So that looks frog. So it's kind of like an YA snippet. In fact, that's what it is, but immediate. You can also do something like, let's say, var fill in one. Let's say, you know, fill in one. Let's just put that for fill. Other equals lookup. Fill lookup other. So we'll do, make that my active snippet. And we'll expand that, and so this will be first, second. So that's pretty cool. So I can see this being really, really useful when you're trying to expand you know, lines that are very similar but a little different each time. And you can even do something like, uh, you know, uh, something, uh, let's say, tilde one equals, let's put this on the second line, and tilde one plus tilde two plus uh, tilde two plus tilde one. I mean, I'm just making this up. But now it's multi-lines, whoops. Uh, I don't even know what mode's in here. Um, yeah, let's go this way, so it's three lines. So now let's go and mark this region, and now we'll go make that the Y snippet, and now we'll expand it, and so this will be one and two and tab out of it and we're done. So this is really, really, really cool. Um, I can see this as being very useful um, and we'll see. So I'm gonna play with it. You guys should play with it as well. And that's it for today.